Hey, so sometimes when you do some coding interviews with some companies, they will give you a link to some real time like code editor that you and your interviewer can write and see each other code at the same time, like in real time. So this is, uh, in this video, we will implement something similar to that. I'm going to try to make it as fast as and to the point as much as I can. I don't want to waste time on useless stuff. So this is what we, what we will be doing. And th here is a demo. So first thing, um, you can write your name. So write my name, click go, this will create a room and now send your this room ID to other people. Now they can uh, join you. So let's actually do that. Oops. <laughs> go to this URL, localhost 3000. Now enter any name you want, then enter a room ID. This, now and notice here uh, how many co people are connected. So if I click join, now we have two people connected. And the same thing applies here. So let's go again and go to another tab and click anything we want join we have now three users connected and anything i type here will be shared between them and one issue here that i'm gonna leave to you to fix it should be very easy but i'm gonna leave it to you if you, if you are interested of course and you should here type for example or just enter the same room as you can see, you won't see the previous changes that happened in that room, right? So if someone you come in, I can type this and everything uh, got disappeared. So yeah, I'm using Redis as the backend. So you should be able uh, to store the current code and just share it each time a new user connected. It should be easy. And the cool thing here, uh, when I click, when I close this browser window, I lost the connection, right? So the server will notify all other clients that, hey, we now have only three users connected, not four. So yeah, we, this still have like there are so many things left. For example, if I if my cursor here, uh, all of the other clients should actually see this user cursor rewards. Uh, still doable, but yeah, I'm just gonna show you the main idea here how we can do this kind of thing. Um, and another cool thing, if you go to local thousand, local host three thousand and create another room, these events here or all of like our web socket connection will be separated into multiple rooms uh, and each room will have this unique id and the events will be like sent from the server to the clients based on that unique id so i can actually prove that to you so let me open the network go to ws which means web socket so i'm gonna refresh uh clear i'm gonna create a new room so as you can see here i have my web socket connection and if I typed here, nothing actually being sent here uh, because that's a different room. It won't actually receive, it won't be received here. And uh, yeah, so that's basically it. That's basically the idea. That's basically what we'll be doing. Uh, so let's just get started. So let me just close the demo and open what we have uh, in the code. So I won't waste your time installing a bunch of random packages and all of that. I have this code here. Uh, I'm just gonna run npm run dev. This will run the front end for us, uh, which will run the same port. So this is the state that we have it. Uh, and what we need to implement is the real time code editor and part of the servers. In our server, we have this Redis uh, client I'm connecting here. It's using the default configuration, the same port number, localhost, stuff like that. So I don't need to pass anything to the connect. And I'm using the Redis adapter 4, which is a promise based, as you can see. Uh, you installed it by typing npm install Redis app next. And I have here a bunch, this is for testing that to make sure everything runs correctly. Uh, this is a, a post request this post like this post endpoint will be activated uh when you actually click go here so let me show that to you so it's in the enter name uh, component i am using the attic query this is a mutation basically you will give it a function that returns a promise and uh, you can attach also some stuff like on success on failure things like that uh the attic query will handle so much uh things for you it's, this video is not about it, but I'm using that to create this username and I'm sending request to this create room with user endpoint, which will go to Redis first thing and store or before that it will generate an, uh, an ID, unique ID based on the UUID package from Node.js 
and but after generating that id it will store in the disk a hash set containing the created and updated at uh, dates dead times for that room and if you think about this is the key for that data if you think about it what you can do is just add here the code this is the current code for uh, the shared code editor between multiple clients right and each time someone changes that you will just come here and change it and each new user connecting to that room you will just go to this hash set extract the code return it to the user so that's how we fix that previous issue but i'm gonna just continue implementing what we saw in the demo so yeah that's basically this endpoint and it will return the room id and after the room id will be returned as you can see here on the success and the in the go and on the join functions i have them here both this is the join and this is the go and i will just go and set the room id to the returned value or if you are joining one i'm just gonna set the room id globally to the value you added in the input and set the username and by the way i'm using the stand and this is basically our global store it's the easiest state management library i found it's even easier from the react context it's super easy so this is basically global and you will just use this function anywhere and extract these values and that's it super easy so that's this is it for the intern name you don't you don't even need to look at it i think if you want to like watch this video you will look only on the server and on the real time editor and that's it so let's close all of that we already have this code written for us so let's implement the server we are creating this hash set that represents that room so what we need now is uh, since this is what will happen now uh, i think i'm not yeah i did not run the server to run it you will go to the package to json you will see we have this node mon uh, command so npm run dev server now it should be working so we click go we are now uh, like we have a username registered and a new room what we need to do is to connect to that room so let's actually come here and uh, write our code. So first thing, uh, if you look to our package to JSON, I installed the socket IO. Uh, this, this will be used in the backend in Express, and you will see it here. As you can see, I'm creating a server and assigning it, assigning it to a variable called IO. And on connection, this actually console log for now. Uh, I'm gonna use yellow. Yeah, yellow bright from chalk dot bold new user like this new user and to use this socket ios uh, package on the front end which is just an abstraction on top of the socket whoop socket protocol which allows you to uh, which allows like the server and the client to, con to communicate between each other like bi-directionally the server could send in at any moment to the client and the client can send at any moment to the server it's different from http request if you think about it in http request you are sent the client always the one that starts the communication in websocket uh, like if, if the client needs an extra information but in the websockets any one of them can send to the other of course after establishing the connection which happens uh, on the front end the front end will ask for that connection or will ask for establishing establishing a connection after that uh, the connection will be established and any one of them can send data to each other at any time so yeah with all of that out of the way let's come back to the um, real-time code editor i will be using code mirror code mirror is very nice package and one of the coolest things i like about it let me show you the writer that wrote this package um, it's this guy I just double I just make sure I'm recording but uh, he have this book called Helicon JavaScript I actually did this book when I was in university it's very very good book uh, if you are like if you are a beginner uh, it says it's a modern introduction but uh, I don't think I think maybe when you reach here it's not so easy but it's really good book uh, yeah he also wrote this package so I'm gonna use it uh, and also I'm using Chakra UI for the front end, but yeah, it does not matter. So first thing I'm gonna import from the act the use effect and use a state. We will use that eventually. And I'm gonna import the CSS code from that for the code mirror, and I'm gonna import 
the material ocean theme and I'm gonna import the JavaScript mode um, if you want to change to different mode you may have, you might have this drop down uh, you will like select a specific language and you will dynamically import uh, that code or that mode like this that mode code like this using dynamic imports to then dot catch that kind of stuff but yeah it's called dynamic imports if you don't want to just import everything which will uh, slow your web page so much yeah so dynamically import them but i only gonna use javascript so i'm gonna import it from the start uh i had to import the subline key maps for some reason and i'm gonna import i'm not sure why but i'm gonna import also the code mirror I didn't see anywhere in the documentation that they requires you like to import these kind of stuff uh, if you are dealing with React, for example, or if you installed it through npm. But uh, after using so many packages, you kind of get to get like used to it. This is how you usually import most of the like these uh, packages. Uh, for example, charting packages, you will keep importing some CSS, some JavaScript here randomly. Uh, one thing that helps to actually go to the package and see the code this helps you understand from where you need to import these kind of stuff so yeah now i'm gonna import io from socket io client um, and i'm gonna import from add chakra ui text component and i'm gonna import the the just stand store uh, again just stand is super simple just look this is the whole documentation this simple page that's it that's everything it's really nice so yeah, i'm just gonna import the store this contains the username and the current room id which available which is available globally so first thing i'm gonna define our state which will our local state on this component which will have an array of usernames these will be strings and these will come from the websocket connection and from our store and this is how our store looks like. So it's just an object containing two properties and two functions. So I can destruct anything I want from it, right? So I'm gonna destruct the username and the room ID just like this. And I'm gonna use use effect to activate or to run a function as soon as this component uh, mounted like this. So first thing I'm gonna initialize our uh, code mirror. So I'm gonna come like down here and create this text area with ID code mirror uh, like this. So to initialize uh, the code mirror instance, I'm gonna create an editor instance called, or it will be equal to code mirror dot from text area. Uh, you could use document dot get element by ID or I use reference both will work it does not matter so get element by id uh, this will be the code mirror like this now you need to give it some configuration so line numbers i'm gonna i need to show some line numbers i think it will be nice so i'm gonna give it true uh key map give it uh subline theme it will be the theme that we imported here uh, in their website you will have you will see all the themes that you have and the mod since i imported the javascript mod will be this one javascript now let's actually go and connect to our websocket client also here as soon as we mount uh, i will say const socket will be equal to io i will give it the in like the server url which is uh, localhost port 3001 and this is what I'm gonna do. And after that, give it this transport uh, web socket, and that's it. Now it, we should actually be like we should actually connect. And yeah, I think this should be it. So let's actually go and see what will happen now. And oh no, I need to actually look at the server here. Remember, we said each time we have a new connection, WebSocket connection, we will console log this. So let's actually put that one here. Uh, this is our Node.js uh, logs. So we have a new connecting user. Uh, something to remember, each WebSocket connection will have its own ID. This is something we will be using uh, shortly. Dot ID like that. And yeah, we already got it because the server stops. 
got uh, connected again and your connection happened so yeah that's very nice this is our code editor now we need to uh, like as soon as the user connects with the backend we need to uh, store how many users we actually have so right um, so yeah, I'm gonna say so on connection I'm gonna expect from the front end to send uh, an event called connected to room and in that event you will send me the room ID and the username okay and let me just uh, like give you two notes this IO this represents the whole WebSocket uh, server that we have and if I type anywhere io.emit this will send an event to all the people connected to my WebSocket server if I want to send events from a specific connection you will use this socket server so if I type dot emit, this will be sent from this exact socket, uh, which will help us, for example, doing something like, like this. So broadcast. Yeah, broadcast. So the autocomplete sometimes it's really uh, annoying. Dot emit. This will send an event to all the connected users in the same uh, like WebSocket server, except this like this actual uh, connection. So for example. And we will use this in our code change. If I change the code, I don't need to this event to be resent to me again, right? So we'll be using a broadcast. Broadcast will send an event to all the other WebSocket connections except this one that I called it on. And IO will send it to everybody uh, in the server. But remember, we talked about rooms. So we will, I will show you how we can create rooms and how we can like limit this uh, event to a specific room to be like emitted to a specific room. I hope it's clear, but yeah. So I'm gonna expect from any client connections to at some point, uh, like give me or emit an event from the front end to the server. This event, this event will be connected to room, and again it will accept room ID and username. So socket dot on. This will be the, this is the name of the event. This is a callback which will accept the data being sent. I'm gonna make it an asynchronous callback. And this will accept a data. I will destruct from it the room ID and username. Okay. So first thing, uh, there is something you need to remember in Redis. You can't nest data structures that they provide the list and the hash set. You can't nest them. So you can't nest a list inside a hash set. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create the or the hash set I created here for the room will represents uh, like meta information about the actual room created at updated maybe the code the current code maybe you can add that and here I'm gonna create a list that have somehow the same room ID which I sent here and it will point to all the users names so let's actually do that so await uh, client this is the readers client dot list push uh, the name of the key will be the current or the room ID the user sent colon users and the value will be or the first uh, value I'm gonna push is the username and by the way we won't face that but Redis does not have an empty list it should always have a data so since and since I'm get telling us to push something and this key does not exist it will create an array and put to it uh, put inside it this element so yeah, that, that's what's gonna happen here and I need to like reference that hey this this socket IED or this connection is like connected to this user remember that I showed you each socket will have its own ID so I need to connect that with the current username and if you think about it I'm pretty sure you already thought about that our usernames could be duplicated so I could have was a specific uh, created a specific room and in another tab I will join with the same username uh, maybe I will leave that also to you uh, it should should be straightforward but again we are not dealing with like authentication or any kind of these stuff so I'm just gonna show you how we can do rooms how we can connect specific connection with a specific user you can do all of that uh, in a much better way maybe later so I'm gonna also store in our redis uh, dot hash set I'm gonna store a set uh, the key will be the socket ID connection and it will point to the room ID and the username. Okay, now let me actually go and grab all the users we have. 
that because I could actually connect to already existing room, right? So this list push will push to an existing list of users or create a new one, which is very nice. So let's actually go and read all the, uh, like the users we have. You can use for that. I'm kind of beginner in uh, Redis, so maybe that's not the best thing. So I'm gonna add the room ID and then users. You will use the L range for that. Uh, it's written like this, sorry. And give it a start and end the stop and end at minus one. This will give us the whole list. And let's now create our actual room name. So room name will be equal. Uh, this should be like a dynamic unique string, okay? Or just a string. But uh, in our case, it will be dynamic because each room will be will have this its own ID, unique ID. And this is our room name. So now to create or you don't actually create rooms, you make WebSocket connections join a specific room and that's it. And this will look like this, join and give it this unique string. And now this WebSocket actually um, like joined or inside this room and to omit, for example, events uh, into this like uh, room, you will just type so socket dot uh, in and give it the room name dot emit and this should do it uh, but i want actually to send this event to everyone in the room that hey we have a new user connected so update the user count or i'm gonna send you the users list and do whatever you want to with it so i'm gonna say io emit or sorry n for all the people in this room emit to them uh this event which is called hey room connection and sent with it the users array that we have which is just a list of strings and this should be uh this should be like a good start to go back in our real time jsx uh, component and this actually come here and after uh, we created our room socket connection let's attach an event listener to the connected to room event and or sorry sorry the server wants this connection, right? They wants this event to be emitted to it. So we will say, hey, when we connect to the server, emit this event to the server. So I'm going to say socket.emit. Uh, we'll give it the same name, the same event name that we expect here. And I will pass to it the username and the room ID, which I actually got here from the top. And now, since we emitted this uh, event, so sorry, we should emit this one. Yeah, connected to room. And now we should listen to this one uh, to get how many users we have. And yeah, I'm just gonna say, hey, socket, listen to this event. And when you got some data, which will be a list of users, uh, just set users and now this will actually give us how many users we have in the current room and so let me just copy paste some JSX here so your username is username room ID and how many people is connected the users list dot length so let's actually go and test that uh, so let me create a room Let's actually go here and connect to it. Join. Now we have two connected users. Yeah, I hope it's clean. I hope I'm not like so fast or making things confusing. But let's just go uh, around that again. Uh, in our server, in each WebSocket connection we have, we attach an event listener to some made up like event we have. It's called connected to each time a WebSocket connection emits that event to us. We are expecting these data, the username and the room ID. And each time we get a room ID, we'll, we will create or push to the same list of users we have in our Redis. Uh, I'm not sure if I can show you that because I have so many data. Maybe I should have cleared that, but yeah, it, it will look something like this. Uh, even this visualization is not that good, but uh, I hope, like, if you are, this is the first time you installed this, maybe just uh, keep checking that. You'll see somewhere you have your data. But yeah, we will uh, push 
to an existing list. If that does not exist, it will create a new one with that username. So it's a list of users. And we will create a hash set linking that socket ID with a username and a room ID. Why is that? Because at some point, we will attach this uh, disconnect event. So each time a specific WebSocket uh, connection have been disconnected, and that could happen when you close the browser. And if you notice, I already closed one of the instances from Chrome, and we still have two users connected. That's why that's because we did not clear uh, the room ID colon users list from Redis, and this happens here. So maybe we can implement that now. And you can't send any data here, as far as I know. I might be wrong because the browser already closed how you can send that right uh, and this will be emitted as soon as the connection will be lost from the client so that's why i actually stored this hash set in redis so what i can do i already have the socket id it's the same one that actually got disconnected right so what i can say hey destruct from uh, the client dot uh, hash get all get all the keys get go and get that key uh, like get the socket i get the hash set with the socket id uh, key let me close this and let me destruct since i added the room id and the username inside an object there i can destruct them so now uh, we will have a new list of users or oh, let me first grab the existing list of users i need to remove one of them right that's why i also restore the username because now I can loop over that, remove the username that actually got disconnected. Of course, in a, re in a realistic example, this could be through maybe a JWT, right? Because here we have some duplicate, like the user could have, or some people could like enter a room with the same username and this could break our system at the moment. Uh, so client dot uh, I'll range And just give it uh, the same. It's the same thing we did here. So I'm gonna just that's gonna hold best. Now, a new users would be equal to users dot filter. Uh, this is the user. User does not equal to username. So I'm filtering the username that actually got um, went out. Uh, so if we have remember that in Redis we don't have an empty list. So if we have uh, a new users list or yeah, if it's not empty, I'm just going to delete uh, the previous one completely. And I'm just going to await client. I'm just going to do the same thing here. But I'm going to pass to it the new users. right? And else, I'm just going to delete that. And that uh, should, should be it. Now, const room name would be equal uh, to the same thing here. And I could say, for all the people in this room, remember, we don't create rooms. We just attach socket connections to rooms. And these rooms are just like, you can think about them just random strings. And all of these people are connecting uh, through the web socket connection in the this random string, which we call uh, rooms. So I'm just going to emit to them. Hey, we have. Uh, I'm just gonna admit them, admit to them the same connection or the same event here, the room connection, and just pass to them the new users lists list, and this should be it. And uh, let's actually go and test that. Uh, yeah, we should have two browsers links uh, instances. So go. Okay, we have an error. Yeah, this because I'm using await and this should be a synchronous function. It should work now. So go. Um, this actually, I think we have some errors. Room ID is not defined. It's here. Oops, my bad. Yeah, it's like this. So go, we have one connected user. Um, so let's actually connect again. So we have two connected users. Now if I click close, we have only one. Now this works. Uh, so 
to visualize things a little bit like in a better way let me go into the inspect click network click ws which means websocket click join you will see we have now a websocket connection and this is all of the data that actually got sent between the server and the client and as you can see the server sent to us and green means we sent to the server red means the server returned to us some data or sent us some data not returned and as you can see this is the name of the event this is the data this is the two user names that we have so like keeping track of this or opening this web socket um, inspect tool in chrome really helpful so highly recommend it so yeah now we handled uh, connecting and disconnecting now we need to handle typing here right this should be very easy now um yeah so let me just uh, look at the code So first thing, we have this editor instance. What we can uh, like have in here is to attach the change, the change event, and this will get an instance and the changes. Uh, I'm gonna get from the changes the origin. One of the nicest thing in about about Code Mirror, uh, it gives you the origin that changes that uh, or changes the text editor let me actually just console look that which is very nice i mean in some packages like not text editors uh, like in a lot of packages they don't give you the origin and let me just show you the origin right uh, so as you can see it tells us that hey there is it's plus input which means the user actually typed if you program like using JavaScript, it changed that. Uh, it will tell you, hey, this have been using uh, copy paste. As you can see, cut, paste, paste. paste. It will give you what happened actually. Uh, I'm not sure about JavaScript, but it will give you something different. Uh, but yeah, I don't care about that. The only the only origin I care about. And so if origin does not equal to set value, and I had to test that multiple times. I'm just gonna emit an event called code changed and the server should actually expect that and this is for example if, imagine if we have 20 clients one of them will send to the server hey code changed the server now have to emit if like to every other connected sockets to that in that room hey the code changed here is the new value except I want to send the same event to the same socket connection again okay so now the server should actually expect that. So let's go implement that. So I'm going to have it here at the top. So socket.on. Um, and it will be a Cygnus function. It will accept the code. And lists. Let's get uh, await. The edit client. Hash get all. The socket.id, I'm getting here the room ID uh, for that user. Now let's actually get the room name, just like we did here. And let's say, hey, socket to send to all the people in the uh, in this room, send them this event. It's the same event. Good. Now, one of the client sent this code change event to the server. The server emitted that to all the connected clients expect, except this one. Uh, and now what we need to go, what we need to do is to handle receiving this on the client. And we can add that here. So socket, oh sorry, at the end, after defining the socket. Socket.on, code change. This will accept a code. I'm just gonna say editor dot set value code, and this will actually add the code there, and this should be it. Uh, yes, let's start from the beginning. Join there, and as you can see, here it is. So yeah, I hope this was useful in any way. Uh, I hope I did not make it confusing. And this is basically it. This is the idea. I think the most important thing here is the idea behind rooms. You don't create them. You just create this random string 
well, it should be unique, I think. Uh, depends on your use case and just uh, join a specific socket connection to that room and then emit events to that connection uh, using to and in. In will give it to all other people, to will give it only to the people connecting, sorry, in will, sub, will send an event to all the people in that room and you will use it uh, and you will use this uh, like the, the global namespace you have in the WebSocket. And if you use socket dot two, this will send uh, an emit. Uh, sorry, this will emit an event to all the connected sockets in that room except myself. And just let me actually show you this. Uh, it's the socket i socket io. And if you go to the documentation events emit cheat sheet, as you can see here, it is. So. Uh, to all the clients in room one, expect the sender. This is the two, and somewhere we will see the end. To all the clients in room one, there is multiple kind. There is multiple ways to do it. Oh, let me do this. But um, yeah, I hope it's useful. I think the next step, just like I said, if someone entered the same room, uh, like after we did some changes, we should show them that. Uh, we should maybe so like display uh, the cursors for each other. To do that in code mirror, we have this thing called widgets. Sorry, not widgets, I think. Bookmarks. Yes, we have this thing called bookmarks. You will create a widget, add it inside a bookmark, display it anywhere. So you can do basically anything you want. Um, yeah, I hope it I hope it was useful. And uh, I will, in the description, you will find a link where you can see the code. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it.